So to recap what we just did in the first derivative, we started with the function x squared minus 2x over x plus 1, and we went through the quotient rule process and found that its first derivative is x squared plus 2x minus 2 over x plus 1 quantity squared. Now before we go on and find the second derivative, I want to expand the denominator of this problem. So we have our x squared plus 2x minus 2 in the numerator, but multiplying out x plus 1 times x plus 1, we get x squared plus 2x plus 1. I think it'll be easier to find the derivative in that form. So now, I'm just going to move this up so we can only see the problem we're working on at the moment. So the first function, the numerator, x squared plus 2x minus my lousy looking 2, and its derivative is 2x plus 2. And our second function, the denominator, x squared plus 2x plus 1, and its derivative, turns out, is also 2x plus 2. So the fact that we have the same derivative might help us when we put this together in our second derivative and simplifying. Okay, so our second derivative will be the derivative of the derivative, starting again with our second function times the derivative of the first function. That's x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 2 minus, now going the other way, we're going to take 2x plus 2 which I can't seem to highlight. There we go. No, doesn't want to work. Oh well. We'll take 2x plus 2 from the g prime. Oh, now it's writing. Great. There we go. Going the other way. Okay, let me erase that other stuff a little bit. Okay, and back to white. So, 2x plus 2 times, I'm going to run out of room, I knew this was going to happen, x squared plus 2x minus 2. And all of this is over our denominator squared, but to keep things simpler, I'm going to go back to that factored form. So it's x plus 1 squared squared. So that gets us to x plus 1 to the fourth. Okay, now we need to clean up this mess. So our second derivative, I'll try to get more room this time. Um, I think rather than multiplying out all that numerator and getting like terms and combining them, which will work, but I notice again because that uh, derivative of both the first and the second function, 2x plus 2, is a common factor. I'm going to actually take out that 2x plus 2 and put it in front. And that will leave me x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 2. Got to be careful because they're so similar you can mistake them. Again, all over our friend x plus 1 to the fourth. Okay, I know that doesn't look much better, but at the moment, making a little more room, we can notice that we have an x squared minus an x squared. Goodbye to them. 2x minus 2x. Goodbye to that. So we're going to take our minus, bring it into our negative 2. And so what happens inside of this big bracket is all, oops, is we, um, let me not forget that plus 1. So our plus 1 minus a negative 2 turns to plus 2. So 1 plus 2 gets us a 3 out of that big mess. So that bracket just turns out to be a 3. Now back to that 2x plus 2 in front, if you'll notice there's a common factor of 2, and I'm going to take that 2 out front of here, and that leaves me with x plus 1. So that numerator just got a lot better, and this is all over x plus 1 to the fourth. So at this point you can notice there's a common factor of x plus 1. And we're going to divide the 1 in the numerator out with the 4 in the denominator, leaving 3 of them. So putting this all together, 
we've got in the numerator 2 times 3, that's 6, over our x plus 1 factor to the third power. And to recap, that is our second derivative of the original function. I'll do it. The third derivative isn't this such fun in a whole separate video.